Paul here with Light and Sound. I'm here to introduce our concert grand. This is the famous Steinway C in Wimble Lane. It's been played on by incredible artists such as David Bowie, Van Morrison, R.E.M., Ben Folds, the Rolling Stones, just so many people. So our goal was to record a piano that was suitable for a whole number of settings, but primarily for classical use. Just to get a good idea of how the piano can sound, we spent some time with Debbie, you know, going through mixes, seeing what we liked, what we didn't like, and tuning it to a way where we were really happy with the sound. here. This actually was all derived from 17 mic positions, so you know, three for Decca, two sides, two rears, two XY, two left right, and then all of the mono mics. And then we have one mix mic. And all the mics have their own character. They're, they're not just the same mic seven different times or however many different times. It's from these microphones, you can get really different sounds. And one of the beautiful things about Windmill Lane is that while it is a fairly large room, it's still very dry. So with the rears, for example, they're positioned quite far away, and you get that sort of distance, but you don't have a huge RT60 to go with it. You can instead add that reverb um, just to sort of shape the sound however you want. Essentially shape the studio using these mics, and then add whatever reverb you want, and you've got a great sound to start with. <laughs> So that's how it sounds out of the box. It's a, it's a very grand sound. Uh, so with these mic choices, you can of course increase and decrease the stereo width. You can bring it down to mono, just standard, and then a further expansion on top of that. Uh, you can pan them if you want to, to create sort of a more ideal settings, and you can change the outputs uh, if you create extra outputs within contact. You can also create a much more intimate sound using the different mics that you've got. It's such a different sound when you start really experimenting with the mics. In addition, you can change curve. This is really to complement how your MIDI keyboard responds, because every, every keyboard is different. I do recommend tweaking it a little bit, just until it feels right, because this, this is really not something that you can demonstrate seeing. It, it's really something that you have to feel. You can also just remove the lower layers or remove the high layers. And then we've got some of these more fun features. So the silent key is used so that when you play the lowest MIDI value, no sound will actually come out. There are situations where you might want this. As you see, you've, you've, we've got this note held down. And if you wanted to maybe start with the sostenuto pedal, you can then have that held down. Now that note is already gonna hold down. That's just one example. Um, you might also wanna do something more interesting with sympathetic resonance, which you can enable and disable here. So you can start with the note held down, just like I have. And then we start getting that sympathetic resonance sort of ring through. When you hit a note and, and then press the pedal right after releasing it or release the pedal and then press the pedal again. So there we've caught those notes there. You can play a note, catch it, and then re-pedal, and re-pedal, and re-pedal. And theoretically, if you did this quick enough, you can do it up to 127 different times. The ability to actually do that would be humanly impossible, but the ability is theoretically there. You get more re-pedals the lower down you are. When you go higher up to the keybed, you, the dampers are much more reactive to the string because the string is resonating less so it will mute it much quicker.
this is a continuous half pedal. If you, for example, have the pedal held down quite far, so if you play softly, they go through. But if you play hard, they get muted as they should. Uh, and similarly, you can play some notes and then let off the pedal. And as you get to the area of the pedal where it should mute that particular note, it will mute it. It doesn't just mute all the notes the moment you get to one set, it actually tracks how much the string should be resonating and mutes it based on how much is resonating, which in what frequency it's resonating on, because you know if it's sympathetically resonating, it's going to react differently. Um, and everything about that is all tracked and handled by this. The tracking script is a pretty cool feature where it saves polyphony and makes the piano react more accordingly. So typically with pianos, if you play the same arpeggio over and over, sort of something like this. You can keep on doing this and it will only kill notes um, once you play louder than all the others. Whereas our one's a little bit more advanced than that. It, it figures out just how much the string should be resonating based on the original note. And we'll track that and we'll only kill notes when it's appropriate. And similarly, if you play a really loud note and still hold it for 30 seconds and then play another note a lot later, even if it was quieter, it would still kill that note. And it, it really helps with just keeping the realism. And then we've also got the, the room tone. If you want room tone to be added, you just turn it on it will add the room tone for the mics that you've got open. Uh, and that's all you have to do. You just, you just leave it, you just turn it on and forget about it. And that is how we recommend you do it. We've also got our own reverb, which you can dial in and it's got its own default values and everything. So it's, it's quite a thick reverb. And then without anything, so this is just the room. It's a very dry hall. And then of course the release volumes, uh, we recommend first reducing reverb, playing the notes lower down. So if we just boost it up to, uh, to max, so that's obviously ex exaggeratingly loud. So that starts to be a bit more realistic or you can just remove it all, which is not very realistic, but some people just like to have them removed. And if you want to, the options there. Resonance is sampled, not emulated via an impulse response. So you'll always have your main note and then the resonance will come in along with it and you can just sort of decide how much you want that to come in with. And dynamic range, if any, anywhere down here is more scoring piano territory, you probably wouldn't want to use it all the time. It's, it's just really boosting those low volumes. So if we click calibrate, we can see we get this menu here and it tells us to, to calibrate it. We just play any key as softly as possible so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, and then to finish calibration, you just play any key as loud as possible. Now with this, you will wanna play as loud as you will ever play on that personal keyboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So everything from there is really, this is really more of a feeling thing. You, it's, it's much harder to show how this works. Um, if you just try using it, it will really just do the rest of the work for you. Okay, but that's our concert grand. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Okay.